BD214 Network Podcast is for mature audiences only. Any videos, music, or entertainment not originating from DD214 Network is used and covered under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, also known as Fair Use. Opinions expressed are our own and do not represent any DOD or U.S. government entities as a whole. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. You are no longer alone now, because we have you. Welcome to another episode of DD214 Network Podcast with your host, Jay and Joe. Hit that horn. Hang on, I got the horn. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> here we are, here we are. What's going oh, on, shit. fellas? How you doing today? Good, how are you? Good, everybody. Oh, it's it's a day. It's always good to, it's always good to see you. It's rainy outside, so... But it's always, you know, this is this is a hundred percent one of those fucking moments of the week that I definitely look forward to each week. Um, even on those days where I'm fucking, you know, struggle bus central on a Sunday morning trying to wake up because I drank too much the night before or anything like that, I'm still every fucking week. This is this is the one thing that I look forward to. This is what we did. We like we're like we're like faithfully here. Like people in some of them pews in some of them churches, you know what I mean? Ringing, ring, ringing the bell, you know what I mean? Come on in, water's warm. Like faithfully, bro. Yep, faithfully. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, th- this is my this is my church. It's not, it's not so cool with everybody else, but that's, that's what I do. You I, know. I like it when the water's warm. Me too. Me too. Exactly. That cold, that, that, that cold bullshit is for the birds, bro. Like fuck all that, dude. Like I like I, I like warm water. If you're taking cold showers, you definitely got some issues. You Dude, got like all that, that ice bath bullshit, like I'm good, bro. Oh, like yeah, it's no. uh, like I, I've done I've done all that. Like it's not not nearly as cool as everybody makes it seem. And the the, uh, the health the health benefits are questionable at best. So I'm really skinny. I don't need my skin and muscles tightening up already. You know, I don't I need to end up like a like a soda can being crushed by the hand of Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. I, 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 totally, totally, I, I completely, completely agree, John. Completely agree. Yeah. 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 But yeah. Hey. hands are clean. Hands are clean. No question. <laughs> but and if, uh, you like, and if you like taking ice baths, if you like taking ice baths, I really don't give a shit. I'm, I was just talking to you. Like to each their <laughs> fucking own in that type of crap. Like me personally, no. Yes. No, I can't. Yes. I can't do it. Who like? And it's like they make. You ever seen the video of the dude? He looks like a Viking. He's got like the 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 axe, and he jumps off the cliff. He yeah. jumps off the cliff. Yeah, you, that video. Like it's such a badass video, but no. The first. No. The first time I was at selection, I was on the land nav course, and there <laughs> there was this fucking creek, and I was like. I like got to this creek and I was like, God damn it. Like, I was like, you have to cross this. Like you can keep going straight and your shit's going to be like a lot easier to get to. But if you crossed mm-hmm. right here and I was like, Mother- motherfucker. And I'm like, I did like the whole, like, yeah, I did the whole, like I, I did the math in my head and I was like, all right, fuck it. Let's do it. So like fucking cinched my shit up and I started like walking in and then all, all of a sudden I took a step and like, I was like, up like a little past my waist 
in like water and it was freezing cold. This is is in November. This is November, by the way. This is fucking November. Like, and I'm like up, up like a little bit past my belly button, like in water. And I'm like holding my fucking dummy weapon up. And I'm like, hello, yeah. darkness, my old friend. You know what I mean? It was like, and at that point I was just like, well, fuck it. Like trudged across. But then I had to fucking, I had to stop on the other side a little ways off uh, to change my fuck to change out of my clothes. I had yeah. to fucking put, I had to put on my fucking dry clothes and like that. Hypothermia. It ate up, it ate up, it ate up time. Yeah, and I had to like I, I was like doing push-ups in between. I was doing all kinds of shit. Yeah, that's exactly because like because I fell in the water like <laughs> in the in the, in the middle of the night in November in a, in a forest in a creek. You know what I mean? It was like God. Well, it's like I, I don't need a cold, I don't need a cold ice bath anymore. I'm, well, I've, I've taken a couple. You know. Speak, uh, like, now speaking of hot water, it was a hell of a week for WWE with such oh, high, with such. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, for them, it started off. A really good week. They got the net deal, which is fucking crazy. The net, yeah. I, the I, Netflix deal is fucking crazy because ten years we're going from billion five. Was it five billion? Like five billion dollar fucking deal, and Raw is going to be on Netflix now versus on cable television. So every That's week, smart. instead mm-hmm. instead of it streaming on USA Network, it's going to be streaming. So it's it's going to be the first official weekly live live show on fucking Netflix. Also, because they're going to stream it really? live every fucking Monday on Netflix, versus oh. it being like pre records posted up on Netflix every week. They're going to keep it as a live show like they do now, where every week on USA Network. It goes live on fucking TV. Wow. Now it's going to be on Netflix, which is incredible because we everyone knows that Netflix has been suffering a, a loss of customers lately, and this is going to be a huge win for them. Yeah, I, I like think that, that was. I would watch. I would watch Raw if it was live every week. I, I, I we, you know what I mean. Like we have Netflix, mm-hmm. so it's like mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, I would, I would watch Raw. Like, well, it, it's still mm-hmm. live every week. It's just not good. Well, um, I, well, I'm just saying yeah. if it was on Netflix, like I don't have I don't have the USA network. So, yeah. And then, uh, right, yeah. And then, like a couple days after that, it was announced that The Rock what became part of the TKO board, which I think was one of the coolest moves. He's making moves. He's not he's not. Yeah, that that, that dude has ex- been smart the whole way. He's been smart. He's the whole extremely way. business conscious conscience. I mean, dude went from one of the most electrifying entertainment in entertainers and sports entertainment to fucking acting. And, you know, he's as long as the role fits him, he's had some roles that are like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Like tooth fairy. And then he's had roles. I I thought that was fucking hilarious. Him as the fucking tooth fairy and the tooth fairy for fucking, what was it? Disney. That was a Disney movie, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, and then the second one, it was what Larry the Cable Guy was the Tooth Fairy in the second one, um, but that one was like, okay, this is a little overboard. But then now he's you know stepping in as a board of director for a fucking sports entertainment company for the fucking company that pretty much runs nope, WWE nope. and fucking UFC and and made him technically, you know what I mean, like the yeah. WWE. You know, and I think it's such a good move, not just for TKO, but also for The Rock. You know, oh, I, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm kind of honestly tired of seeing him in movies that, like like we were saying, movies that don't fit him, you know, because there are – John Cena, I feel like, just did it right. He went into the movie game, and he just does these slapstick comedies, and they work for him. Whereas now, like, Rock, I, he's, like, that motherfucker's made me laugh my ass yeah. off, dude. I, just, I yeah. just wish I could see – I just wish I could see him. Yeah. Now – there it is there it was gonna it was gonna happen sometime and yeah, uh, i mean at some point you know and then um the, the next day a fucking bombshell dropped bigger than nagasaki oh, bro, did, you, did you hear about this shit like do you hear like some of the shit that's come out in like the documents yeah. like the shit it's he was doing bad the, li- the, the literal is fucking shit going down. Doing. So the we literal- figured out a couple things. Like, so, oh my god, we figured oh out a few god. things. So Vince is a sex trafficking 
sex enthused son of a bitch who likes shitting on women's heads. And who in the fuck does that shit? Like, like who in the fuck does that shit? Yeah. Like literal shit. Like who does and that? Then, and then Brock Lesnar has a piss fetish, which I'm not judging. I'm not you judging. Know, that's not but, yeah. You know, but, but I the situation at hand is pretty fucking bad. And we have talked about this before that we have a sh it's sharp, you know, it's, it's sharp. It's a real thing. And it's there for yep. a reason. And yep. sharp doesn't just exist in the military. They might call it something else in, in a, in a other company, but this sexual is sexual harassment training. I mean, it's, it's yeah. the same harassment, sexual assault. Like, That's all sexual assault, dude. Like, yeah, is, like I just had to, mean? I just had to do fucking that type of fucking training for my job. Yeah. Right. You know, and for the it first never goes time, away. It, it never goes away. And like, the, and for the first time in 70 years, a McMahon is not running the company. So, I mean, it, it finally happened. We all knew it was going to eventually happen because the, the stories were going to come out. And there seems to be more stuff coming out that I, that I just read about Matt Hardy and John Cena. Here we go. I mean, you know. one of the things that I found out with, with the Vince McMahon stuff that came out. So if anybody remembers the early 2000s when Shane McMahon fucking left for a while. Mm -hmm. Shane McMahon left the WWE for a bit. It was because of this type of shit. Like Shane came out, yeah. it's been discovered Shane left because Vince wanted Shane to be joining in on all this fucking bullshit. And Shane was like, fuck you. I'm not doing it. Right. That's right. So, yeah. You know, bad props to fucking Shane McMahon, at least, for not falling into the fold with his dad and telling pretty much telling his dad in the early 2000s, even this is bullshit. You shouldn't be doing this. It needs to yeah. stop. It doesn't. I'm leaving. And then right. fucking leaving the company for a while. Right. Yeah, it, it, it is really hard to quantify how dirty and nasty like this is. And yeah. it is it's good, it's good that he's gone. And when motherfuckers like him propagate that type of shit, like it, it ruins and it, it destroys like the foundations and all the hard work of people that have like come before. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and something interesting that my wife just, said last yeah. night. We, just we shatters watching. everybody's trust. You know what I mean? You know and, what I mean? Go, on, go ahead. Uh, yeah. My wife and I were watching the Royal Rumble last night. Yeah. No, we know the Royal Rumble was last night. We're not a wrestling podcast. If you want to watch a wrestling show, go watch Lucha Outsiders or some shit. Uh, but, you know, the Royal Rumble happened last night. My wife, was saying while we were watching it she was like there must be a sense of like relief a strength of a sense of like just liberation and yeah. freedom knowing that you know that he's gone he's not in the picture and it's not like how it was a couple oh he's gone but he's still gonna make decisions no that he's gone like you know, it's so, over it's so my, wife over. Was, so my wife was talking about right. like the, the perspective of some of the athletes and the workers that are still there that were the good guys and how they feel about the whole thing. And yeah, they won't talk about it, but I think, you know, she's onto something saying that there is a sense of liberation and relief coming from all of this. Yeah. Right? I mean, and, and that's the thing, like, obviously there's going to be that sense of relief even back in the locker room now, because that's not hanging over anybody's head anymore. And Mad props to everybody that stayed with all that shit going on and dealt with it, it and fought it against it and mm -hmm. stuck it out because, you know, it, it wrestling, you know, it's, it's definitely not the same anymore. Like it was when we were all growing up, you know, obviously we're the attitude era fucking generation. And I was, I was even before that. So yeah, but I, but I, even but I was that. like, you were, you were back with the NWO and fucking way before that. Like I'm talking like, yeah. like eighties, 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 eighties. I mean, or and, WWF and, and NWA. Like, and, 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 and the one big thing, like, the one big thing that really kind of, I, I will give mad props to a fucking corporate corporation on this fucking slim Jim pulled their sponsorships. They did. I of saw the that. WWE for right now uh, because they, of this. They came back. They came back yesterday. Oh, did they? 
They did. They came back yesterday. So they did because because when the allegations came out, they pulled and said, hey, we're not sure if we can support this company. But I guess so since since TKO yep. said fuck you to McMahon and booted them off the board, Slim yep. Jim said, OK, the company did the right thing. We're going to give you back our sponsors. Yeah, they actually put out a statement specifically saying that the reason why they pulled out was because of Vince McMahon. And the reason why oh, yeah. they pulled back was because of, like you just said, because of the swift action that TKO took against this mm -hmm. ordeal and then transitioning in through this is cm punk you know i you know we were just talking shit about him but as we talk shit there's still a lot of truth of the matter is that uh, right. oh, literally just about everything that he fucking said except the part about vince mcmahon dying for others to run the company his spirit you know in a way he's kind of right vince mcmahon is dead he's gone you know? He ain't, he ain't coming back. He ain't coming back. He's from not. This one. Yeah, he's he ain't gone. coming back from this one. He's gone. In a way, CM Punk was correct in everything that he said ten years ago when he left the company. That pipe bomb, mm -hmm. you know the, you know he he knew and it happened. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, uh, yeah. So that that's uh, that, and that's sports. <laughs> sports that's entertainment, cool. right? Sports yeah. entertainment. Sports yeah. entertainment. But yeah, I mean, it, it was it was. I mean, for all that good stuff to happen for for WWE to have that one thing overshadow everything, and Triple H said it best. We had such good positives this week. I don't want to focus on the negatives. You shouldn't either. So let's move on from it. And you know, he's right. Fair. Yeah, I think, and I, yeah, because it's. We'll see what happens when this starts coming down to like litigation and like actual court cases. But I don't like the McMahon is not coming back. Like it's it's yeah. over. The 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 uh, the, uh, the uh, McMahon era is over in the WWE. Like my wife said it best yesterday. The boys' club is is closed. It mm -hmm. is. It is, and it ain't yep. coming back. It ain't. It ain't coming back. Like. Okay. That's and and the thing is, if it wasn't for this merger with, you know, Endeavor forming TKO, this these things wouldn't have happened even with these allegations that came out. Vince would have right. never been removed because it would have still been the boys club. But because they did this merger last year with Endeavor forming TKO mm -hmm. holding and all that, that's what really forced this to be able to happen with these allegations coming out. Because mm -hmm. it wasn't the typical boys club that McMahon had anymore. It was other people with other interests because we had, you know, the UFC, some of the UFC execs were are on the board for TKO. There's other people on that board outside of just WWE good old boys that were able to force the issue and say, hey, we've got to get rid of them. This is going to hurt our pockets in the long run if we keep Everything. them. And the Netflix deal, that Netflix deal, it would have been over with. Oh, yeah, man. it would have. It would have completely. They, Netflix would have probably ended up pulling out of the deal if if they didn't get rid of it. So yeah, yeah, and you know, and moving on, you know, for me, I just want to say, I hope you, I hope your weeks were great. For me, it was a very simple week, just working on some Fallout stuff, working on the new the we. The, you, you, me, and Lord did our first Fallout episode, which uh, was how'd that go? Uh, well, the preparation for it took about sixteen to eighteen hours. Okay, okay, uh, that was tough. That was a, a challenge for me, but I got a little enthusiastic. I kind of feel like the scrap episode that was supposed to be done turned into an episode that wasn't a scrap episode. So I kind of feel bad because <laughs> my excitement kind of over my excitement overwhelmed me and i just kept talking you know and and you know my wife was telling me it's okay you were excited and i'm just like you know i'll address it on the next one but that was exciting the preparation it kind of you know podcasting i love podcasting and i think extensive research to make to respect something is super important so that was a lot of fun and then i was working on awesome. You know, I was working on fall on Fallout RP. I got to play uh, a bunch of GTA and Red Dead on the PlayStation finally, uh, which, really? which uh, completely different worlds. Now that I have finally came over to the PlayStation side, 
Mm -hmm. And in Red Dead, the Red Dead online world is a fucking mess. Yeah, don't even bother with that one. Yeah, it's it's, it's a mess. GTA, like Rock, Rock, Rockstar, literally like left it alone and like didn't do anything. It's terrible. And they said they they cra they cracked Red Dead's code, and there's like stuff on there. For, they said for like twenty six, yeah, or something like different, like you know, you know, like updates yeah. and like and parts What's of the map, that? like all kinds of shit. And yeah. it's like they left they like they left it there. To be used and yeah. Rockstar and Rockstar just let it die because they got like because because shark cards or something like I'm like yeah what in the fuck dude we could have had we, we could, like oh because that game is such a masterpiece that yeah. game is and such then, a masterpiece and then GTA Online my fucking god uh, that it's it's a mess but there was something that I noticed that I really liked about these controllers and it's the fact that when uh -huh. you're like playing like okay so for example Fallout when you pull out your mm -hmm. Pit Boy the light turns green. You know, that's pretty fucking yeah. cool. Or like when the cops are coming after you, it starts flashing red, mm -hmm. red, red and blue. Uh, and like, <laughs> and then when you're using like the phone in GTA, like yeah. you're, using, you're using this and everything comes through here. I'm just like, oh, shit, that's pretty fucking cool. So, I mean, I got to say kudos to PlayStation. Their remotes are fucking dope as hell. Yeah. So, yeah. While we're on that topic, I have to get used so, to the the buttons, though. That's it's it's super weird for me. Yeah, so that's one thing that's that's kind of I've had to get used to with with the PS5 controller. So, like in some games, the touchpad here. So there's a ring that lights up around it, and that ring changes colors, kind of like how the light on the front of the PS4 yeah. controller changes colors. But this actually in some games like in the spider-man games you swipe on it for certain actions within the game also um but like in god of war if i die the ring turns red if i'm using a certain magical ability the ring goes to the color of that ability so it'll be purple or green or like it, it's pretty interesting the way fucking sony did this shit I like Very it. Nice. I like it. Don't like is got a mic. So the microphone, like if I'm using headphones that don't have a mic, it's got a mic built into the controller. Wow. So Holy crap. An online game like Call of Duty or Fortnite, and you're using the in-game voice chat options. If you don't have a actual mic in your headset, you can just the controller's mic is what's use being used for your voice. Yeah. I really like that. It's super smart. It works. It does what it's supposed to. It does what it's supposed to. Uh, but yeah, guys, how was your week? I know we had a birthday this week. Uh, what do you guys got? <laughs> yeah. We oh, did. yeah. Fucking old man Jay. Old man. Yeah. Old man getting older. Keep fucking surviving. Did you like, pass the... Did you pass the... Told? Yeah. Something like that. It's like, yeah. But no, it was... We didn't we we didn't do a lot, but it we went back into like the routine. So like last week, well the week excuse me, last week was cold, but like the week before was like balls cold. You know what I mean? Like like disgusting yeah. cold. So the girls girls went back to my, my daughters went back to school this week. So we kind of just started getting back into the routine. And then got some stuff done around the house. And then Friday, I didn't do much for my birthday, but we we got pizza delivered to us. Uh from uh, one of my homies in um, Tucson, freaking friend of the show, uh, Pablo Martinez. So I wanted to say thank you to uh, Pablo for for uh, hooking us up with some birthday pizza. Forge and fire royalty, Johnny did. Like, it was it, it was nice. And then uh, I went out for just I went out for just a little bit and sang a little bit of karaoke, and then came home and called it a night, and that was it. So wasn't wasn't too much, wasn't too crazy, but it was a birthday. So yeah, like yeah, it's one one year older, man. Like another another year closer to death, dude. That's what I'm talking about. Like, <laughs> John, what are you doing? I'm trying to fix something with my camera over here. Just keep going. He's, uh, here, you know he's he's, he's put on he's put on a background so that way he can beat his meat while we're fucking live on the yep. on the internet. Yep. Yeah, because my name is Jeffrey Tubin, remember? Oh my god. <laughs> oh fuck. Um 
Uh, but yeah, all right. Shoot, you you guys want to you guys want to dive into like a little bit of foosball? Like, do it. I want to hear it. Today's all gonna right. be a fucking interesting day for sure. It really is. So we have we have uh, two games, two favorites, uh, two teams that the entire country wants to win. Basically, outside of the fan base, you know, yeah, and. And so it's it's making for a couple of interesting matchups. You want to start on you want to start on the NF, NFC side. So, yeah, because I mean we've got what Niners versus the fucking Lions today. Niners Lions. Yep. Oh, um, yep. fucking this is their ball right there. None of that pansy ass dick tugging. <laughs> what is it, Lions? Lions, Lions Niners. Yeah. Lions. At, at San Francisco, right? I gotta assume it's at San Francisco. So. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's at San. It's in San Fran. Um, and it was nineteen. Yeah, it was uh, ninety-two. Was the last time the Lions fucking played in an NFC Championship game? So, you know, it's thirty plus years coming since the Lions have made it this far. It's mm-hmm. a big thing for you know Lions fans altogether. I um, that's the, the Lions. The Lions are you know even as the underdogs, they're going to be the uh, the sentimental favorite for like everybody except oh yeah for, for like everybody except 49ers except Forty Nine ers fans. Whether you're yeah. whether your team's AFC or NFC Lions right now for the NFC side are the fucking fa- uh, are the Fan are favorite. favored. Yeah. Uh, because because it's been so fucking long in the Lions. I mean, this year the fucking Lions have done it. Like, I was, you know, there was a, there was a glisten last week with how the Green Bay Niners game started off. We're gonna go back to that one a little bit because Green Bay was owning the fucking field for the first half. Yeah, and then they were. the fucking flip, the switch flipped at halftime. Niners came out and fucking took the game back. I yep. was I was really hoping it was going to end up being Green Bay versus the Lions because being Detroit, being someone that's Detroit, pulling Detroit, for Detroit, fucking Detroit. When Detroit would have had another home game, they would have had another yeah. home game. Detroit would have had yeah. another home game, and it would have given them a fucking shit ton of an advantage this week with the NFC right. Championship. However, mm-hmm. I mean, the thing is with the fucking momentum the Lions have right now, there's still that good fucking chance. I haven't looked at the betting odds. I'm. I'm because I'm not a betting man. I don't, you know, fully look at those week to week. I still, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping a prayer that fucking the lions take the fucking Niners out. We'll see. I it's you and me, you and me have been calling it all year. Fucking Ravens, Ravens, Niners in the Super Bowl, And the Ravens and the Niners are both in the fucking, in their respective conference championships. Now, whether, whether or not they freaking advance that that's what we're going to be waiting to see today. You know, because we got we got the freaking the Ravens, we got the Ravens and my Kansas City Chiefs on on the AFC side, and that's an interesting game. Um, yeah, I would say I would say if you're a gamble if you're a gambling person, I would put money on Baltimore. Um, my heart my heart is with Kansas City, but I if I if I had if I was going to gamble it, I would probably put money on Baltimore. The only problem with that is. It is the fucking Chiefs and it is Mahomes. So we'll see. We'll see which Chiefs which Chiefs team shows up this today because they've had some really really bad games this year. Struggled to get yeah. their offense, up. but some. But now I, now during now during the playoffs, they've really they've they're they're starting to show like a, a playoff winning team. You know yeah. every game and they're so, it's like playoff Mahomes basically. So now that's mm-hmm. they, they like Baltimore is going to have to factor that in. They're going to have to factor that in. The only like, thing I'm really looking forward to with with the Chiefs fucking Ravens game today is if Jason Kelsey uh, Jason Kelsey is going to be there again because old dude was tore up from the fucking floor up last week in that fucking Chiefs fucking yeah when, yeah when he was like cheering his brother on for scoring touchdown and shit yeah <laughs> jumping yeah. out of the fucking damn box fucking drunk as shit no shirt on and fucking Bills Nation fucking just yeah. and. I'm not sure if you saw any of the videos after the fact later this week, Jay, but like there was a point he was like chugging beer out of a fucking bowling ball 
during the tailgate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he went down game. and he, like, he went down in the fucking crowd. Yeah, yeah. He, yes, he did. Well, not yes, even down in the crowd. Like he was he was out there tailgating with Bill with the Bills Mafia yeah. before the game yeah. even started, chugging beers out of fucking bowling balls and shit, partying it up with everybody. Yeah. Like, dude fucking retired the week before and said, I'm no longer sub- repping a team anymore. I'm gonna go get fucked up at this fucking playoff game that my brother is in. Like and we're, fucking we're, we're, did my it. Brother. <laughs> he's be, like he is, he is beholden to no one. Like, I was I was more excited to see because they showed more of Jason Kelsey this past game than they did a fucking Swift. Right, right. And, and I like, was just like, he provided same. good quality fucking entertainment. <laughs> it was fun. Every it was time fun they fucking it showed him, it was fun to fucking watch because it was like, okay, what's the next stupid thing we're gonna see Jason Kelsey do? And right. there was one clip at one point fucking Mahomes' dad tried to fucking rain Kelsey in back into the box. Like, he was right. coming out of the box to grab Jason to bring him back in. Like, <laughs> dude, calm the fuck down, sit the fuck down, stop doing this shit type of situation. He was having a good time. Like, the Chiefs Oh yeah, Chiefs had, Chiefs had a pretty good game. Chiefs had a pretty good game. There were some missteps here and there, but it was pretty much like that's – and I think that's – because like Baltimore's favored and Baltimore is the fan fit, the fan yeah. favorite. Everybody's everybody in the AFC is tired of the Chiefs right now. So Baltimore is like it's most the people. Same thing. It's the same thing on that on the AFC side that it is on the NFC side. You yeah. know, everybody's tired of the 49ers except 49ers yep. fans. Everybody's yep. tired of the Chiefs except Chiefs fans on the other side of the fence. Yeah. So I think, you know, I think the only the only fan bases we we're not losing. On the Chiefs side is there's a couple, you know, like some of the the Ravens, like the Ravens uh, rivals, you know, like Steelers. Steelers fans are probably going to root for the Chiefs. You know what I mean? Like some of those. You know what I mean? Like, but outside of the Rust Belt, outside of the Rust Belt, pretty much the entire country wants wants the Ravens to fucking win. So we'll see. But the the real problem with the Chiefs is not is not that they can't be beat. It's that they can find ways to beat you. And like mm-hmm. all it takes is like that, like three, two, three points, win by a fucking win by a score. We got Butker, we got Butker completely capable of kicking like a 50 plus yard, like last second field goal. You know what I mean? So assuming it, mm-hmm. assuming it's good, you know what I mean? Like that can end your season with Kansas City. Yeah. And it'll be, and it'll be another fucking, it'll be another fucking Chiefs in the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Which I know would piss a lot of people off, but. It it can happen, and we're about to find out in about what three hours. We're about to find out in three hours. Yeah. Um, so, so we'll see. We'll see. I, I think me and Joe are still safely going to call it. We are probably going to see a Baltimore San Francisco. We're going to see. Super Bowl. Uh, yep, it's going to be but, Ravens Niners right. for the Super Bowl. It might be, but, um, but wouldn't it be fun? Wouldn't it be fun if it was like Kansas City and Detroit? Wouldn't it be fun? Ooh. You know what I mean? Wouldn't that be fun? That would be. <laughs> that would be a really interesting fucking game. The uh, it does end up because because the that's very the first, thing. like the very first the very first game of this of this entire NFL season was Kansas City versus Detroit, and yep. now and now they're both and that the was the one where what Casey lost by one point to Detroit. Yep. yep. Um, well, and it, it was that was the first game of the season that we shot ourselves in the dick. Like that mm-hmm. was the first. That was the very because like we should by all rights we should have won that game, and Detroit yeah. slugged, slugged slugged it the fuck out with us. Our offense was sluggish and fucking like Detroit never stopped. And like that, I was really impressed with Detroit when, when I like that we're talking about that's fucking week one. And I was so impressed. I was so impressed watching Detroit play because they did not quit. And that was, yeah. that was, that was very indicative of that, exactly where they're at right now. That's, that, that's and, indicative of like, and they that's made the it, thing, like the that game, that game really yeah. set the pace for the fucking lions this season. Because the they came season. in, they took yeah. the fucking reigning Super Bowl champs down. Yeah. Even though it was a yeah. one point fucking game, they yeah. still, still took won. the fucking, still fucking reigning won. Super Bowl champs. Yep. A win is a win, whether it's fucking one point or 20 points. It doesn't fucking matter. They mm-hmm. came in, they took the reigning Super Bowl champs down. They've mm-hmm. fucking had phenomenal games in the playoffs so far. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, last week there was, there was a point I thought they might have fucking ended up taking an L. But fucking they Detroit, battled back. Ex- they battled back. But they battled they back. Win. They fucking were the warriors that they're fucking paid to be. They fucking did their job, 
And now we're, you know, last week of the playoffs. Next week, we've got the fucking Pro Bowl with all that bullshit. I miss when the Pro Bowl used to be actual fucking football for the Pro Bowl and not right. a fucking skills challenge and then a flag football game on a fucking Sunday. Right. Um, so they don't sit on injury. It's like, it's like yeah, well, it's like. A, but that's it's because a that's derby week. I mean, if we look at it, the Pro Bowl used to be. The, the players going to the Pro Bowl used to be determined off of, you know, they would do the same thing. They would pick who's going to the Pro Bowl before the championship games even started. But then players would be shuffled around based off of what two teams were going to the Super Bowl because they would pull any players from those Super Bowl teams off of the Pro Bowl teams for the AFC and NFC. And then they would have a legit fucking football game. Now they still keep those players out there. And they switch it over to fucking flag football and then a skills competition. Right. It's, I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna watch it just to see what what it looks like. You know what I mean? Just to like, because like, I mean, I'm kind of like what the All Star game. Watch, you know, they, they, they keep yeah. adding, adding stuff. The All Star game in baseball. And it's kind of like it's kind of in a similar vein. It's like you know what? Let Let's see if it works. Let's see if it works. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? I like, mean, and that's the thing. Like, I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna watch the the Pro Bowl next Sunday. Like. There's not going to be a, the the flag football game just to fucking watch it. I watch it every fucking year, even though it's flag football now and not real right. fucking man sports. Um, right. But I got to, yeah. Go ahead. It's just it's it's interesting what the NFL's done, and mm -hmm. I will I will continue to say it. Right now, we're in the fucking we're in the era of ref ball. We're not even it's not even football anymore. It's fucking ref ball. I'm. This season, this season has definitely stood out because people. There's are been some losses for teams that was purely yeah. off of bad calls from the refs. And and it will and it and it changed. It changes. It changes the direction of. It can change the the direction of the entire season. Number one. Mm -hmm. Number two. It can alter and did alter uh, playoff seedings. So like it's and that's that's been happening yeah. throughout the season. On both in in both conferences, being you know what I mean, like it's turning into being, like one 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 yellow one one, one yellow flag mm -hmm. can completely disrupt like the entire game. Yeah, you know what I mean? because I I will be the first to admit the Lions should have been the fucking number two seat. The Cowboys shouldn't have. That fucking win the Cowboys took over the Lions was a fucking was because of a call bad call from the fucking refs. Right. I will. I. I mean, I'm a fan of my team, true and true. But I know a bad call when I fucking see one. <laughs> well, when was I happy good, that bad call good. happened to fucking put us in favor? Hell yes. However, that changed yeah. the entire outcome of the fucking playoffs, even because yep. that one bad call is what put Dallas in number two slot and fucking mm -hmm. the Lions in the number three slot by the end of the season. Right. Well, and it, you know that's that, and that's one of those things where it's just. I understand the refs have to, they have a job to do, but like when they can see when new when New York can see what the refs see before they see it, even sometimes, yeah. Sometimes there needs to be like no, that New was York bullshit. needs to intervene before the fucking and, shit goes through yeah, fully. That, that happened in the fucking Kansas City game, like they had, like yeah. New York, New York, New York waited waited until Andy Reid threw a flag to tell the fucking refs that like they were they, that they were completely wrong. That was like it was like the fastest freaking like challenge you've oh, ever yeah. seen, but Kansas City like still had to make a challenge before like like New York wasn't going to step in. They were they like they they were waiting for they fucking were, Andy Reid to freaking challenge. They were it. waiting it like, for yeah. Why, they why, were why waiting for the fucking challenge flag, and that's yeah, bullshit. Like, like that's if you can bullshit. clearly fucking see it remotely, fucking yeah. get in the fucking yeah. ref's ear and say, yeah, they have "Go fuck yourself." Ear. That fucking call was piss poor. Yeah. Reverse it. Yeah. Exactly. Like you need to, like you guys need to step back and like, you know, whatever, whatever, the, whatever the call was, it doesn't even necessarily have to be a, uh, a penalty flag. It can be, you know, where did they have both feet in when they made the catch? You know what I mean? Like yeah. before going out of bounds, it could be where, what did a knee, did a knee or an elbow touch the ground before whatever happened? You know what I mean? Like that, mm -hmm. it's that, it's that type of shit too, that you can't always, see right there in the moment that's and yeah the, the real problem is there that the refs are getting away with making bad calls like when we when we have all the technology available to us to put you can pull that back it's it's okay to make mistakes kids nobody's perfect 
Like it's okay to make mistakes. Like, like that's you're you're there on the field in person. Like they always should they always should have the first say. But Jesus Christ, when we can see from like three different angles in super slow mo exactly what happened, it's like no 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 no. That was that that call was fucking not good. Like you need to you need to you need to rein that one back in. Yeah. So yeah, anyway. I mean, and, and that's that's exactly why. Like last week, even there were plenty of times I'm yelling at the TV. <laughs> like, are we playing fucking football or are we playing ref ball right now? Because even last week in the four games, there were mm-hmm. a lot of fucking calls where it's like, what the fuck are the refs doing right now? Right. Like they need to stop jerking each other off and they need to fucking pay attention. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I agree. Like, like you said, that call that Andy Reed fucking threw the damn challenge flag on. It should have never, come never down to him. the challenge flag should have never fucking came out of his fucking pocket. Right. And that like, and you could tell like we were we were watching it. We were sitting there watching it, and we were like, what like why did it take it? Because like as soon as he threw the flag, the refs started convening, it, and you could tell they were about to go to a commercial break so that they could like do like the uh you know the, the replay or whatever in the booth. And it didn't even take that long. They immediately like fucking re- like and it was like yeah, that was that was like the fastest. It was, like it was seconds. They didn't even bother. They, Emotional damage. Yeah, like that. That's how wrong. That's how wrong they knew they were. And it was like, why did we? Why did why did it take so long, NFL? Why did it take Andy yeah. Reid throwing throwing down the challenge flag? That's like I'm I'm crying. I'm I'm a Chiefs fan crying again. Right. I mean, like, this was like, literally me with a lot of those fucking calls. Over the fucking playoffs. Bruh. 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 <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> like, I mean, it was, it has You're been muted. fucking it's horrible. Work. You're <laughs> <What muted>. the <laughs> fuck? There's not enough of that. Just not enough of yeah. teamwork, man. There's re- there really isn't. There's just, and that, you know. But yeah, it, I think the NFL is start, slowly starting to realize that their product is going to take a hit if, like, F- f- fuck regular season games, dude. Like, if like playoff games get determined by a ref ball, God for God forbid the fucking Super Bowl. If that came down to like some ref ball shit, bro, like, like the NFL is gonna start taking a hit on the product. Like, people are gonna stop. Like, for everything people that people stop say, they're fucking gonna... tuning in, stop watching. Yeah, it, it's gonna it's gonna be bad. I mean, fuck if 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 the first time like hypothetically let's say this fucking super bowl in two weeks comes down to fucking ref ball i will be the first to fucking say i will fucking stop paying for cable so i can fucking watch football on fucking during football season because i will be so pissed off with the fucking nfl that my cable my my cable and internet provider will lose fucking money because i won't pay for the fucking cable anymore to be able to watch the fucking games sure well it I think a lot of it too, and like I think what a lot of people are actually worried about, especially with the ref ball, is the fucking gambling. Like yeah. gam- gambling has officially made it into our professional sports, and they're they're hyping it, and they're you know in 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 de- in decades and decades long past, children, there have already been like point shaving scandals with fucking referees in different sports. Like this is a thing. And like, yeah. there's a re- there's a reason why like gambling laws used to be so strict, especially as it relates to professional sports, is so that the outcome is never in question. Like it like like somebody won, somebody lost, but that's what happened. Like yeah. they, they, you know, like, when when you start introducing gambling, the NFL can very quickly turn into fucking WWE. You know what I mean? And it's like that's sports this shit is happening. Say say again, John. Sports entertainment. Yeah, seriously, and that's like. And I don't want baseball or football or professional basketball, um, men's and women's. I don't want there to be a question of over whether or not the results are legitimate. You know what I mean? That's yeah. That's like the last step before the the, the fucking sport dies. You know what I mean? I mean seriously. Like, God damn it, dude! Like, don't, please don't, please don't fucking and, and, gamble gamble away my fucking NFL, dude. Please don't gamble away and, my NFL. Like, and you know that's the thing, like. Those of us that that watch WWE like professional wrestling, right? We we expect, right? Yeah, that's yeah. 
we expect it to be just it's entertainment it's staged it's scripted it's not fucking real right but with the nfl that is supposed to be an actual professional fucking sport where it yep. takes skill and talent to be out there on the field to fucking yep. win a game and yep. the refs this season so far have taken a good chunk of that skill and shit out of the fucking game by the fucking calls they've made That's and correct like you were saying, Jay, I hope it's not from gambling. a betting standpoint, from a gambling standpoint, it's going to fuck things up because now we're fixing fucking uh, games in a sense. Yep. And, and it you know, players it in the past much, doesn't make it doesn't take much. In the to past, have gotten in fucking trouble for fucking fixing games yeah. for it, betting reasons. Like the NFL has made fucking regulations against their players fucking betting on the fucking sport themselves. Because of that. Yep. So, right. like, it, it's just, it's one of those well, things, the, like, when I watch the, the NFL. Bowls in, Super Bowl's in Vegas this year, right? Yeah. Well, I think I think the NFL said that, like, the team, whatever teams make it, they are not allowed to gamble in Vegas at all. Like, the when, they, when they're when they there for, when they're there for Super Bowl week, they're not allowed to gamble. Yeah, they're not allowed ball. to fucking, any type of gambling. They're not even allowed right. to go fucking play the slot machines or the fucking blackjack right. table. Right. Like. Straight the, up. N- the 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 NFL has straight said, if you get caught, you won't play. Yep, that's fucking like they're not, and that's and that's the dichotomy, right? Because it's like, but all it takes is a couple of people, you know, like one 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 fucking call can kill a drive when uh, a, a team is making a comeback and they have momentum. One yeah. one call can kill it can kill an entire drive. You know what I mean? Like it, it and doesn't. We've and it doesn't seen take those much. calls this season. Yes, we we've have seen and those not, fucking calls. Yeah, it's one of those. Like it's like it doesn't take much to kill the the momentum of of, of a football game, um, and it can heavily swing the results. It can heavily swing. Mm-hmm. Football is all about freaking, you know, offense versus defense on both sides. Uh, on you know both sides, you know, for each team, and it's like. It is a, it is a, it is a, it is supposed to be a clash of, you know, like it's like basically like two platoons going out there and having at each other. Yeah. You know what I mean, and you got to come up with the right war plan, freaking, to get to get your 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 ball in the other team's freaking end zone. You know what I mean, and vice versa. And that's like, mm-hmm. that's what it's supposed to be. It, it very quickly stops becoming that if we start throwing gambling in there and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's that's where it will very quickly become. Outcomes are fixed, freaking points are shaved, freaking X, Y, or Z, and now people either made or lost a lot of money. You know yep. what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I really hope it's not that. I really hope it's not that. Yeah. That would, I, that would, I, it would hurt my heart. It would hurt my heart. Yeah, that's – that's I, I – it would take an entire section of the year. It would take the enjoyment out of my life for an entire chunk of the year. If it comes down to that, because I really do enjoy every fucking Sunday. I, I mean, I enjoy it more now because, you know, me and you fucking talk fucking football every damn week from the time the season starts till the fucking time the season ends. We're talking about it. We're fucking, you know, analyzing. We're fucking me and and John are the boys of summer, dude. And like you and me, you and me get through the winter. You know what I mean? Like you and John get fucking baseball during the summer. (laughs) <laughs> and spring, and then me and you get the fucking fall slash winter with football mm-hmm. season. So yep. and it would hurt. It, my, it would hurt my heart, dude. It would hurt my heart. I I, I remember when I saw that the, the NFL started allowing like DraftKings type shit and like whatever like on their broadcasts. Like I made a very sar- you know sarcastic comment when I saw that the first time, and I was like, I wonder how long it's going to yeah. be before we have a fucking point shaving scandal. Like I like I literally like I I made the, co- when the comments got, when you've got before. fucking prof- when you've got the athletes from the teams getting sponsorships from these fucking gambling sites like Bingo. DraftKings fucking fanatics uh yeah I'm surprised because it's been what three years four years since they started that shit yeah I'm surprised that we haven't had one yet well it's like well and and, and somehow as much as we we like to shit on the refs it's almost like the refs have gotten progressively worse too. Yeah. And it's like, like they're, they're making calls and not calling them back on some crazy ass shit where it's like, 
I don't even know what they're like. The the announcers in the booth are like, I don't even know what he was looking at there. You know what I mean? Like the, the announcers are saying like that. Yeah, that's a bad when fucking. Got, when you've got like, you know old p- ex players and coaches that are you know mm-hmm. analyzing it from the fucking booth during the game, and mm-hmm. they're like, "Where the fuck was the holding? Where the fuck was like, this? Where the fuck was that? Like, what was the ref looking at? You know, it's bad. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's because normally, like back in the day, they didn't do that. They didn't really second guess the refs. It was kind of like back in yeah, back in the day, the refs like, would unspoken- take a call. Like the unwritten law, a call and, like, yeah, and the announcers would be like, "Oh yeah," and they would replay it and show where that call fucking came into play, and right. it would be a legit fucking call. Yeah, and, and yeah, like really, really bad calls were only like once in a blue moon, and they actually became famous because they were so you know blatantly bad, right? Yeah, but they were like nowadays, it's like there's a fucking terrible call like once or twice a goddamn game, and it's like come the fuck on, dude, you can't like that's just a legitimately bad call, like you can't. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to start fucking. Oh, yeah. Like, well, start no, but, fire, but yeah, no, that's fire rises. <laughs> like, <laughs> but see, that's the thing. Like, I mean, there was, there was at least two or three bad calls during all four of the games last week and the games the week before and every fucking week since the fucking season started, there's been horrible bad fucking games. calls. Yep. And, you know, being a Dallas fan, we get bad reps. Dallas fans get bad reps because you see a lot of the time these fucking videos of the Dallas fans that are fucking breaking their TVs or fucking throwing shit because of whatever Never reason. That. Never understood. I don't it's either. Like, now you need a new I'm, TV. Like the t- I'm a the Dallas TV. fan through and through, but I'm not gonna fucking break my fifteen hundred dollar fucking TV because like, a I don't I don't have the fucking money to go out tomorrow and buy a fucking new TV. <laughs> If the and TV, he, it's a if fucking the TV, game. If the TV was actually in the game and like the TV lost the game for us, yeah, I might fuck it up a little bit. You know what I mean? But the TV was on my fucking you know stand here, you know, and didn't do anything at all. It just it just gave me you know the view of the view of my team yeah. fucking up all week. You know what I but mean? But then again, you know, you got to look also like a lot of the times when you see those, it's like the older Dallas fans that grew up in the era of the CRT TVs and shit, where you could fucking feel you could fucking punt a goddamn tv and it wasn't gonna break and now with flat screens nowadays you just look at them wrong and they might fucking stop <laughs> like, like yeah, some fucking <laughs> fucking like carry flat, shit you know what I mean? like, flat screens are the fucking uh what is it the gen zers of the fucking tv world like you yeah. look at them wrong and their feelings get hurt yeah like oh like like half half of it like fucking st- start streaking out and shit like yeah, yeah. start losing start losing pixels like yeah. How dare you fucking how, how dare, dare you, you assume <laughs> <laughs> that I'm gonna run uh, that I'm gonna run properly this whole time. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm not gonna go further into that fucking topic though. No, the we're good. No, we're good. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> if you remember the good old days where like rock and roll bands used to like throw TVs out of like hotel rooms and shit? It's like now it's like that. And the TV even... still fucking worked when they fucking picked them up off the fucking ground. <laughs> now now rock and roll. <laughs> it like takes out a car, like takes out a whole ass car, but it still works. You know used, I mean? like, but you still the... plug it in, the fucking screen's not cracked, the thing fucking turns on and fucking still works. Uh, uh, those, <laughs> those really used to be the good days, and now guys like MGK are making uh, guitars out of razor blades, glorifying suicide. Anyways. Holy shit. I got God damn, way to, way to fuck up the mood there, John. Jesus. Wow. Did you not hear about that? No, I, I heard, heard about it. I just something. was going to try to stay away from the fucking suicide topic, you know. Hey, hey, that's his problem. All right. He he glorified it, not me. Anyways, I got some um to kind of lighten the mood a little bit. I got 10 oh, weird God. facts about the about the US Army that you probably didn't know. Okay. Are these are these verified? Did you did you did you cross these check are, this? These are all these are all verified. I've I give you 10 minutes before I fucking guarantee you I know at least one of them. All right, let's see. Number oh, yeah. 10. Holding the distinction of being the oldest active duty infantry unit, the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment, also known as the Old Guard, Old Guard. established in 1784. The cer- this ceremonial unit and escort to the President of the United States oversees the prestigious changing of the guard ceremony at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and was honored with the American Legion's Distinguished Medal Service Medal in 2016. I knew all of that. Yeah, yep. knew all that. That was, that that was not a uh, fact. 
That See, one's it. That less one, than 10 minutes. It took fucking, you know, know first so like, one. <laughs> no, it's they're actually a really cool unit. And I, I have known um, a couple of guys that were in the old guard. And mm-hmm. I have been around um, tomb guards as far like, mm-hmm. I, I um, a guy like they get they get a patch basically like they, they get a, they get to wear like a patch on their on their uniform for being a tomb guard and those are pretty rare to see like just in day to day infantry life and yeah. I've seen a couple of guys with the that that were tomb guards and that is a distinction and an honor that like I I could have never done it like that like oh, yeah. the, the, the amount of discipline and the oh just the the attention to detail like those guys are sharper than anything like yeah this uh, is the uh this is the badge that they get for being a tomb guard yeah let's see it let's see it joe tex quilini joined yes beautiful that's the one that's the one it's yeah. it's it's a very coveted fucking badge um very rare like if very you, if you rare i've got one of the guys that i served with that initially enlisted as an mp and then he ended up reclassing to infantry um because he wanted to he wanted to become a tomb guard cool and then he ended up becoming a tomb guard good friend of mine um good for him dude fucking great dude you know he had his fucking he had his mind um but yeah that's i saw i saw when you when you reclass from another mos into the infantry and I've said it before, like it really is sink or swim. Yeah. Like you will you will you will burn out very quickly or you will fly. And there is no and there is no and there is no in between. You yeah. don't like re- reclasses that aren't gonna make it in the infantry, like they don't last long. They really like the infantry loves to fucking eat its own, and they do. Yep. They love got, eating their own. All right, I got nine more. In two thousand eleven. The average soldier consumed 22 gallons of fuel per day while driving their vehicles, a stark contrast to World War II when the soldier required only one gallon of fuel daily on average. Interesting. That's a – it wouldn't surprise me, though. Like, if you're talking about, like, fuel economy and the different types of engines that we run and, like, how yeah. big and heavy the equipment is, like, makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> it makes, makes, makes sense. It does. I mean, now are we talking POVs or are we talking, like – they're military vehicles at the military, same time, like in a combat. Military vehicles. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if we're looking at that also, though, because if you're looking World War II, a lot of a lot of vehicles it there was everything. they were just like vehicles weren't used to go from point A to point B a lot. They were just used within small areas during World War II, where. Yeah. In, you know, the Iraq-Afghanistan wars during that era, the 2011 and on era, we were fucking convoying from the FOB sometimes 30, 40 fucking miles out to a village. Mm. So that definitely makes sense, the the big difference in gallons of fuel per soldier. Yep. Uh, Seven and eight kind of go hand in hand together. I I feel like kind of this should just be in one sentence but imagine the army as a city reveals that it would be the 10th largest in the united states but the vast land holdings surpass those of some states so if it were a state itself it would outsize hawaii and massachusetts combined. doesn't doesn't surprise me i think i've heard a similar a similar factoid before yeah that wouldn't surprise me one bit yeah number six is one that i learned while reading a chart at the D factor in AIT is that among the ranks of army personnel are astronauts distinguished by their astronaut wings retired Colonel Douglas Wheelock, for instance, commanded the ISS after being the first active duty soldier to do so. That's awesome. That's the, and that's like, yeah, the other, that's the other like sim- completely like rare precious badge is like to, to have like the astronaut badge on your, yeah. your duty uniform. Like that's like, like you, went you, ain't to see shit. you ain't gonna see that shit anywhere else. You know what I mean? Um, number right. five is an intriguing connection lies within the iconic painting Washington Crossing the Delaware by Emanuel Gottlieb Lutz. The individual holding the flag next to the future president, Washington, is none other than James Monroe, who would also go on to become president in the future. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Um, that was that was on Christmas Day, by the way. That was yeah. on fucking Christmas. Like, yep. 
A remarkable 24 U.S. presidents served in the Army, participating in state militias that supported the nation during pivotal periods like American Revolution and the Civil War. Um, interesting fact that I just recently read the other day. I'm kind of learning, some, um, as I'm doing some research, I've been learning about West Virginia a lot lately. And I found out that Harper's... Take you home. <laughs> There's a reason why that place is close to heaven. I'm telling you, it's beautiful out there. Uh, but there is, um, oh, fuck, god damn it, Squalini. You had to sing that song. <laughs> oh, hey, that's like the third time you've mentioned West Virginia today, and I just had to fucking go with it. Yeah. So, not only is West Virginia cursed as hell, okay, uh. But that Harper's Ferry was apparently the real true start of the Civil War. That there was a very tiny, small incident that occurred there that sparked the Civil War and not another. I forgot. Fort Sumter. What happened? For, yeah, not, Fort Sumter. And not Fort Sumter. Yeah. Thank you, Jay. I knew I could depend on you, man. A lot of. Uh, all right, number three. Unlike other service branches, the Army was the last to embrace an official song. It wasn't until Veterans Day 1956 that the Army Goes Rolling Along was officially declared as its anthem. Yep, and the uh, the origin of that song is actually a field artillery song called the Kaisan Song. Oh, shit, yep. really? Yeah, yeah, that's the tune. That's the tune that it goes to. Mm. Yep. By the Kaisan Song. So Nothing. yeah, that's the, there. So it goes it goes even farther back than that, but it wasn't it didn't become the army goes rolling along and then and so like you said, oh, it, that was a board, that was a board question for for me, uh, or that was that was among the board questions that you could potentially be asked. So like really? when you're, yep. when you're studying for the board, like the origin of the the, the army song, and I used I used to I, I didn't like playing stump the chump, but I that was one of the ones I would use as a curveball just to see. Like how deep they, how deep some of the soldiers, like like for mock boards, not for like an actual promotion board. Yeah, but it's, I would do I would do a mock board with my soldiers to help them prepare for the board, and that was one of the ones I used as a curveball to see how deep into the study guide they actually they actually delved. Yeah, and there so, was actually one that I actually got to give a shout out to former Sergeant Sally, who was my NCO at the time, when he explained to me. I never got to the board. I never got to take a mock one either. But he was kind of more honest with things, if you will, regardless if I agreed with the things that he was saying to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but he he was telling me that there are certain questions that are, are not even in the board. Correct. That's you know? correct. And one of them that he one of them was the was how, why are hookers called hookers? Uh, which which was super interesting to me, and it's not even just to be comedic at all. But there apparently right. there, there was a whole you know thing with General Hooker and mm -hmm. and his women, mm -hmm. and the women that he had around him, yeah. and apparently there's the origin story of that. But one that always stuck to my mind was how many trucks are on an army base? Yeah, the one. Yeah, that's the the traditional answer. It's not. It's it's completely fabricated. But that's yeah. That's but, the and what's, and what's and what's the traditional answer of what's inside the truck? Uh, a mat, a match, a razor blade, and a freaking uh, forty-five round. Yep. Mm -hmm. And when the when the pole falls, it should fall like basically where you can find the a, a pistol. But that's that's that that it doesn't exist yeah. like that anymore. None of that is real anymore. But yeah, that's that. And there's also a thing too that you have to push it down a certain way so that it hits uh, another like concrete pillar part where it would land where it would break the truck open uh, yeah i don't know yeah i, I never that really was got it. Yeah. it was like one of those like but yeah like kind of like those yeah like there's i got asked one time why um the engineers are um like their 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 thing is a castle and i actually knew the answer i actually uh it's it's, it's chess mm -hmm. it's chess oh yeah. Like infantry, infantry is the queen of battle. Uh, freaking, you know, cal cavalry obviously is the knights. Engineers are the rooks. Um, and yeah, that's and the, the king. The king of battle is is artillery. And I forget there used to be something for the bishops, and I, I always because we don't really use it's not it's not a um, thing really in modern 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 military. But but yeah, the freaking um, but yeah, that's the that's your traditional. You know, the engineer the engineers are the rooks. So. Yeah. 
Number yeah. two, the task of mapping America, including the renowned Lewis and Clark expedition, fell into yeah. the hands of the U.S. Army. Notably, Army officers were among the first Americans to witness the grandeur of Pikes Peak and the Grand Canyon. Yep. And that's, uh, yeah, that was, Lewis and Clark actually came right right here through Kansas City before Kansas City was a, was anything. You know what I mean? It was just yep. fucking, fucking wilderness. You know what I mean? Like, after the Louisiana Purchase. You know what I mean? Like, so it was still just fucking wilderness. But, and, uh, yeah. and here is the most, I, j I found this out this morning. This is, to me, the most interesting fact is that prior to World War II, members of the 45th Inch Infantry Division proudly adorned the swastika patch on their left shoulder as a tribute to Native Americans. However, in the 1930s, the symbol was replaced with a thunderbird. Yes, that is correct. And that's for obvious, for obvious reasons. Yes, and that that symbol was heavily used in in uh, Native American culture, um, going all the way into the early 1900s. Like even there were even like like basketball teams that were called the swastikas, and it was it was a symbol of fucking peace. You know what I mean? Like and it was like, and yeah, and that there is the, the 45th division did have that originally as their on their on their division patch until the the rise the rise of Hitler basically, and it fucked fucked everything up for everybody. You know what I mean? Oh uh, yeah. So. Uh, now uh, we're gonna go into news. I have some something really cool is going on. Uh, pregnant troops and new military moms will will get expanded mental health care under lawmakers' proposal. Um, the article stating here, um, leader of a House panel on military quality of life have proposed a pilot program called the Maintaining Our Obligation to Moms or Moms Who Served Act. The initiative introduced in Congress this week seeks to allocate $25 million over five years for a specialized mental health care program for pregnant and postpartum service members in military treatment facilities. Representative Chrissy Houlihan, who co-sponsored the bill along with Representative Don Bacon, it's a great name, emphasized the impact of pregnancy on a mother's mental health and its potential effect on their military duties. Houlihan, drawing from her pers personal experience of giving birth while serving in the Air Force, stressed the importance of providing mental health resources, including prenatal and postpartum care for military personnel. The bipartisan bill will also has also been introduced in the Senate by Senator James Sh Shaheen and Deb Fisher. The need for mental health program for pregnant and postpartum service members has been a focal point in the panel's discussion, and Representative Houlihan has actively raised questions about this issue during healthcare-focused meetings and briefings with Defense Department officials, military spouses, and advocacy groups. The Moms Who Served Act comes in response to a 2022 Government Accountability Office report revealing higher rates of mental health conditions during the prenatal among service members compared to civilians. All right. Step in the right direction. Yes. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely a step in the right direction. That's something that's probably been needed for a lot longer, but good to freaking see him doing something now. So, yeah. So didn't they have it recently where now the, uh, when you give birth, the time that you have off is, is longer now? Yes. Am, am that's already, that's already, yeah, that's already occurred. And then, and then now with this, that, I mean, you got, you have, you have to support your troops. And part of supporting your troops is supporting the family. You know what I mean? Like that is part of, that's what keeps the machine working. You yeah. know what I mean? That re it really is. And that's, so yet, like, yes, yes, you are, you know, kind of proper, property of Uncle Sam when you're in the army, but like you still, like everybody needs to take a step back sometimes. You know what I mean? Absolutely. When, when our, our female soldiers are, are pregnant and give birth, it takes time to recover from that. And so you don't, like mess yourself up worse. You know what I mean? Like that's like put, you know, pushing a whole, a whole ass baby, like out of your body. That takes some fucking recovery. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's like, if you, if you want to do it the right way, you got to do it the right way. So, you yeah. know, and then in another move, it now uh, Squilini just got told me that the army initiated this too, but no diploma. No fucking problem. The U.S. <laughs> Navy is making a move to enlist individuals who didn't graduate from high school or obtain a GED, marking the second time in about a year that the service has taken this step to meet enlistment goals. The decision comes after a similar move in December 2022 to bring in recruits who scored very low on the, on the armed services qualification test. 
Both decisions are uncommon as other military services usually avoid or limit such measures due to challenges in attracting young people who meet the military standards. Under the new plan, Navy recruits without an educational credential can join as long as they score over 50 on the qualification test, which ranges 0 to 99. The last time the Navy accepted individuals without education credentials was in the 2000s. Let's talk about this. Let's talk well, about this. I like I, I do. I will say I, I like that they raised the as uh, like the ASVAB score. So just to qualify for it, you have to score at least a 50, which which would put you dead middle, like in the in, like in your, your average. Yeah, it, but that's like I feel like it's like, like you need which, to you need to know that you're capable of doing something in order for you to join. Yes. Our service. Yeah. We're not, it's like, pretty we're much. Not, it's pretty much saying we understand you don't have the education however if you score you this we understand you're smart enough to do what we need you to do um yep. i mean i mean that's the thing i know me personally when i was going through high school i struggled because i got fucking bored in school with the way th with the pace of the learning and everything and you know this is a great help for those that similar situations because you've got some really smart people that just traditional schooling isn't for them yeah right. absolutely so you know with this you know we know at least with the asvap score requirement it gives that sense of we know you're book smart enough to do the job you just a traditional learning environment wasn't for you which is why you didn't get your ged or your high school diploma right yeah, and it's kind of like the same thing like i know certain people who who did some time in prison who had the opportunity to join the military who mm -hmm. didn't who you know who who i'm not sure if they had education or not but if they didn't i'm sure the opportunity was still presented to them and there are people out there like you said not physically school savvy they're just not school savvy but there's something in their brain that works a hell of a lot more differently right. you know and and it, it's it's a real thing it's a very real thing and i think that this is a great opportunity for people in that criteria to be able to have a chance mm -hmm. to do something more not just for themselves but for their country as well sure absolutely that yeah. sounded so, that sounded so like cheesy didn't it yeah no 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 you're fine yeah no, no, no. i just makes wanted, yeah for their for their country for the country serve your country yeah no you're fine that's yeah. pretty much exactly what it is Yep, and mm -hmm. our our last our last news, but uh, it's more like a commemoration. Uh, February third marks the anniversary of the sinking of the United States Army transport Dorchester and the selfless acts of four Army chaplains aboard during World War II. The four mm -hmm. chaplains, also known as the Immortal Chaplains or the Dorchester Chaplains, represented three faiths: Catholic, Jewish, and Protestant. The the 368-foot steamship Dorchester operated by the War Shipping Administration as part of a convoy that left New York in January 1943 bound for the Army command base at Nar Narsar Suak in s southern Greenland. Uh, to sail from Newfoundland to Greenland, the ship would have to navigate icy seas and pass through waters infested with German U-boats. But after midnight, February 3rd, 1943, the Dorchester was torpedoed by a U-boat in the Labrador Sea off of Greenland that went down in 20 minutes, according to the official records. 900 of, of the 904 aboard, 600, 675 drowned or died of hypothermia in the frigid waters, and it was believed to be the worst single death toll for a U.S. convoy during World War II. Mm -hmm. The loss is remembered most for the sacrifice of the four chaplains. The two Protestants, a rabbi and a Catholic priest, they were all army first lieutenants who went down with the ship uh, they had spent much of their time calming nervous young soldiers even putting on even in variety shows to help pass the time but when the torpedo hit the chaplains guided men below decks to lifeboats and handed out the life jackets and right before the ship went down these chaplains took off their own life preservers and gave them to us one of the so one of the survivors a 19 year old at the time daniel o'keefe said a few weeks after the tragedy they were standing on the deck praying hand in hand as our lifeboat drifted out of sight fucking a fucking a that's some that's some fucking championship right there like that's what i'm talking about like, you know and uh you know 
I've been recently find, finding myself to be a little more open with religion recently, interesting enough. So I find this to be I find this to be very a very touching moment and man well, it's, up, it's uplifting. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's very it's very powerful, you know, because that, that sacrifice that that is that is the army way, that is the military way. That's what yeah, that's what we go we, we do go down with our ship, homie. Like yeah. that's what we do. Oh, oh, look at this fucking guy. No, stop. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna bring uh we're not supposed to we're gonna get censored. You're showing pussy on here, dude. <sighs> you're muted, dude. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh, we're fine. <laughs> Mrs. was bringing me my fucking breakfast, and she let fucking all the cats into the office at the same time. So I'm like that's doing funny. a podcast, trying to grab so pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's man. funny shit. So, I mean, whether this was actually a very great episode, I had a lot of fun doing this one today. But, guys, you know what time it is on other shows. You see people spin the wheel, you see people poking at each other, you see them end the show with fighting, but not on this one. No, sirree, not on my watch, not on my <laughs> watch. But on a serious note, guys, you know what, it, what time it is. Every single week, we have to promote suicide prevention weather is funny and weather triggers emotions emotions trigger actions actions speak louder than words the first thing you got to do if you don't want you know if you haven't i uh you know i it's kind of interesting i'm going to get a little personal kind of interesting couple you know a couple weeks ago sometimes i just i just get down you know, I sit down at, the, at this computer, but this computer is is a lot of my work and I don't take a lot of days to really take the time to go outside sometimes because I'm constantly focused on work. And on Thursday, I felt like that. I was folk. I was focusing on work. Bless you, Jay. I was focusing on work way too much. Like and it was to a point that at the end of the night after I had finished you know, recording, I was just like. I'm taking the next two days off. So thir Friday and Saturday, these last two days, I didn't do anything. And I found myself to be bored. Right. You know, you know I right. found myself to be bored. And with that, it kind of brought a little, you know, negative edge to me. And, you know, these are th these simple little things trigger, like I said, you know, uh, the weather triggers emotion, emotion triggers action. Actions speak louder than words, and I didn't do anything with it, and I feel like I should have. I didn't. I didn't feel like I wanted to leave this world or anything like that. But I was kind of down. I felt kind of depressed that I wasn't working, and I forced myself not to work because I needed the break. So what, right. I'm, trying, what I'm trying to say, guys, don't don't overwork yourselves. You know, you you start you you. It's possible that you could lead to yourself some dark thoughts and some things that you don't mm -hmm. want to think about or don't normally think about. Take the time for yourself, you know, love yourself, show yourself that you love yourself. Go out and buy yourself, buy yourself some clothes. Go, you know, get your nails done, get a pedicure or something. Take or just take a walk. You know, sometimes you just need to take yeah. a walk. You know, sometimes you as you get so overwhelmed, it's just like, you know, I just want to go outside. You know, just go outside. It's okay. But we know that so, that some of you guys, it's hard to do that. And if you don't want to, if you are having a hard time talking to your friends or your family, even your acquaintances, talk to a stranger. Call the National Suicide Hotline. Text or call 988 or dial 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-TALK. There is someone there 24 hours a day waiting to hear your story, waiting to help you, and waiting to keep you going to let you see live another day, live another 168 hours, live another year. You know, it's a new age. It's We got to be positive. We got to be there for each other. And we got to be there specifically specifically for yourself if you're not taking care of yourself how are you going to take care of others and that's just an iteration of what jay says and you already know what it is if the plane's going down 
you got to put your mask on first. You know, you got to get yours on first yep. before you can help others. So, guys, I appreciate you guys coming every single week. I love you guys. We love you guys. Uh, you, you guys already know. Just, uh, hey, come see us next week. Just come see us next week. You know, chew, chew, chew on yep. your caramel tablets. Uh, put a little sugar in your coffee. Hell, why don't you put a little barbecue sauce on your chicken nuggets? All right. Oh, and one last thing. Do not. Do not eat White Castle at three o'clock in the morning because I learned the hard way the, the morning. after. <laughs> so, guys, okay. we love you. We'll see you in 168 hours. Don't do drugs. Don't beat your spouse. Don't beat your parrot. And put and put a leash on your animal too. If you're gonna tap it, wrap it. And if you can't fucking wrap it, don't be a dummy. Fucking shoot it on her tummy. All right. Like, Selena, <laughs> you got something? <laughs> don't add to the population or subtract from the population. If you Thank end you. up in jail. Well, you're fucking screwed. You <laughs> did. Uh, and we have a comment right before we leave by Christian Romero. Salvatore Ambulando is a Latin phrase used like Aristotle to say it. It is solved by walking. It helps us to resolve some inner thoughts. There you go. Absolutely. You know what? I love it. Thank Christian, you. you. You came right Thank at you. the la- you came right at the last moment, and I'm glad that my. T- I were talking elongated it. We love you guys. See you in 168 hours. Y'all be good. Oh. Oh.